Welcome to another edition of Canine Conversations where we tackle all the hard topics, all the great interesting stuff on uh, dog training. Um, and it just makes makes everything so much better because you get all these answers. So um, we go for you know quite a long time. This is going to be some at some point some kind of podcast. I don't know how to make it into a podcast. So for now, it's just a long video on YouTube. And if somebody knows how to make it into a podcast, contact me. I will give you a, a special gift for helping me. Um, Ro asked me um, this interesting question that I think you're going to love. It says, uh, I really don't see how you can train a dog only with treats. I personally believe in Caesar Milan's training way. I just don't understand why people are so stubborn to stay with the traditional treat training. I even think it's stupid. You should train the dog by first of all, train yourself. Because if dogs were free, there would be no problems with them. So humans are the problem. You know, I, I, I first read this like free, like like free, like you're not going to pay for them. But what you really meant was free, like they would be running around like at, at, like like wild animals. And that seems really stupid because dogs are a domesticated version of the wolf. In fact, if you want a dog running around free, like you're saying, then that dog would be um, what we consider a wolf. Um, but since the dog's been domesticated, they can't run around free. And when dogs run around free, you see they make bad mistakes. They run in the road, they get hit by cars. So that's really bad. Now, Caesar Milan's training way, I'm not criticizing Caesar here. He might be a really nice guy. I don't know him. But um, Caesar's not a, not a real trainer. Caesar's never titled a dog, never done obedience with a dog, never done any of that stuff with a dog. He's really on TV made a career of telling dogs what not to do. So he's the no guy. He's telling the dog, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. I've never seen him do focus healing. I've never seen him do anything competitive. I've never seen him do trick dog stuff. So you're asking me the question why to do it with treats because that works you see i've trained a lot of dogs i've competed with dogs i've titled dogs i've worked with more dogs than anybody you're going to talk to and treat training works now purely positive training i'm against and everybody knows that about me that i don't believe in purely positive training i do believe in a balanced training approach so i'll give a dog a correction but treats build a solid relationship with a dog which is why i say to do it because it builds a nice relationship i like dogs i want dogs to be happy and if you want dogs to be happy, you're going to do what it takes to train them in a way that's beneficial for them. And forget all this stuff. I mean, Caesar's great. I mean, Caesar's done a lot for dogs. But, um, but don't look at that as, as far as being, you know, the, the gospel on dog training. Look to me, because that's where the truth is really going to be here. Um, L. Johns asks the question of, um, oh, it, was, it was on another video, and, you, and your question, L, is, I think it's L, um, I thought this video would explain more why to use a choke or a prong collar. These devices seem uncomfortable by design. I saw your video ra raging against collar bands. I wish I understood your position better. So that's a great question. I'm going to help you understand the, the question better because pinch collars or prong collars, whatever you want to call them, or choke chains or slip chains, whatever you want to call them, are a really beneficial tool to teaching a dog what we want them to know, which is how to be obedient, how to comply, and to do that with the least possible amount of, um, of constriction or of, of, of pain or discomfort, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I mean, I think most people do use the tools incorrectly, which is why I have this video, this channel, and put up videos for people to learn more and more how to be better dog owners. That's super important to me, and that's why I do this. Um, watch my videos um you know join my member section if you like or go to my free youtube channel and, and and check out my videos on using these tools and you'll see that they're so important they're so beneficial for dogs they help dogs i've helped save a, a ton of dogs with this training because you know i use these tools uh, positive only training doesn't work i mean it, it's really nice and it works on the smallest amount of dogs and when it works it's really really nice but don't rely on it. Don't let it be your own, your only methodology. It's just really, really, really dangerous for the dogs. Okay. Hope that makes sense to you. Um, we're going to go quite a ways here. We got a lot of questions to get to. Okay. This here is, is kind of a long one here and it says, um, I have a five month old American Pitbull Terrier. I socialize them with other dogs, mostly strays, um, not, not pets around, also are less educated about socializing. No, no, you kind of go on. Please keep these questions kind of short. If not, I'm just reading things. Um, strays the only one that live with a four-year-old German Shepherd as well, who's balanced one. Today, the little one got in a fight with a stray he's been playing with since day one. My puppy instigated the fight. How should I tackle this? I broke the fight up. I gave him some snaps on his flat collar. Well, first of all, don't use a flat collar to give corrections. Um, and don't let dogs play when they're wearing collars, because that's going to be another really, really dangerous thing. Um, I took out the slip lead, put it on a leash and on a flat collar. If possible, please address this. Um, so I don't, I don't really know where this is going, but first of all, um, I mean, p terriers, any terriers, by the way, are going to be much more dog reactive. Oh, sorry, my 
paper swung away. Um, much more reactive than shepherds. Shepherds are more herding dogs. Terriers are hunters. They're, they're vermin hunters, so they're going to be much more animal reactive, whether it's dogs, cats, or anything else like that. Um, but you know, give the dog the structure to know what you want him to know, uh, and give him corrections when he needs corrections. Give him uh, a, a praise when he needs praise. But. It's two different animals, and if, if your dog is playing with stray dogs, I mean, you're, you're setting up for a complete disaster because you don't know what's gonna happen. Don't do that. Put, only introduce your dog to safe dogs. It's super, super critical. I've been saying this for a long time. I hope you, sometimes you guys will listen to this. Brittany loves unicorns. I have a problem. I have lost most, if not all, patience with my dog. It's just not, it's not just one day, but every day. I've been training him since I got him at eight weeks. He's now 11 months. All he does is bark, whine inside the house, yada, yada, you kind of go on. Um, I'm not a therapist, I play one on TV, but I'm not, I'm not one. Um, he's collar-wise, um, what can I do? He knows so many tricks, but learning to not bark and react, he can seem to understand. Well, first of all, if he's barking, he's, he's trying to get attention, and the only way you're gonna get a dog to stop barking, well, it's two ways you're gonna get a dog to stop barking, is one is buy an electronic bark call, it's gonna shock him when he barks, and it's gonna get him to be quiet. Maya is a complete maniac in the car. I put a bark collar on her, she's very quiet, and actually she enjoys the car ride much more because she's not acting like an idiot, right? She's actually getting enjoyment out of being calm in the car, and you might do your dog a favor of that. Um, and if you've done a lot of training on dogs since he was eight weeks old and done tricks, everything the dog is probably really excited to perform for you and he's getting a response out of you obviously you're going crazy here I'm, you're not crazy but you're going crazy but based on what you're saying here because you're telling me the dog is is barking and doing all this stuff because he wants to do something if you're not home a lot maybe get the dog a walk you know get an online uh, on-demand dog walking surface like wag to get good over there walk the dog a couple times get some energy out of the dog um, but you kind of created this monster so Ignore the dog when the dog is barking. Put a towel over the crate, do something, but you can't let the dog control your life because you're gonna be giving this dog away and that's not gonna be fair at all. So get on that. That's really important for people. When you guys are training your dogs, make sure the dog has you know clear timeouts and or else the dog's not gonna be very, very happy. All right, let's see what else we got. We got I got so many questions to get to. Thank you guys so much for watching these videos and for, for making these videos possible because I enjoy doing them. Um, okay. I, uh, Natalie, I haven't asked me anything. I hope you can help. We have two five-year-old Labradors that we adopted six months ago. They sleep in the house at night. Every morning around 3 a.m. they wake up and start tearing up the house. Anything they can find, whether it's pulling off the tablecloth or, put, my God, pulling books out of bookshelves. It's not funny. Uh, we give them toys to play with in the evening, but they always want to tear into our things. Is there anything you can suggest? Yeah, you need to control your dogs. I mean, you can't. You, 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 I mean, you can't let a dog do this. I mean, what can you do is don't let him do it. You need to get the dog structured. You need to get the dog to pay attention to you. You need to get the dog to, to really focus on you. You need to do obedience with the dog. And if the dog is doing stuff when you're, when you're, I mean, I hope it's not happening when you're sleeping, but if it is, you need to crate these dogs. You need to put these dogs in a crate so that they can't reinforce their behaviors because that's what happens, right? So the dog starts doing bad things and suddenly, um, is getting enjoyment out of it because of course they're gonna get enjoyment out of it. Dogs like to be destructive. Um, they do, they really like to be destructive. I don't know why, but they do. Um, and you're kind of yelling at them doing this or not doing anything. So they're, they're fulfilling their own crazy drive. So you've got to create the dog. You've got to get the dog structured. And uh, I mean, man, obedience, obedience, obedience. It makes owning a dog so much better. Look how good Goofy is. Um, little Leno, Lino, Leno, I have a rescued hound who's six. I've worked with her using old techniques. She's fabulous. She will recall on command. We can go on walks. Um, she will not tug on leash. She should oh, anymore. Okay, spend a lot of time with her. Um, but she, her past is very sub submissive and timid. After watching your videos several times, I'm trying to add her skills, heal properly, yada, yada, yada. My problem is when now when I'm overwhelming her with praise and treats, she loves that she would rather roll over and lay there. Clearly, she is not understanding my lure. Um, she will not follow the treat. She, she wants it. Okay, so you're doing too much, that's all, simply. What you need to do when you're luring dogs in the beginning, when they're first learning the lure, what people will do is like they'll start to lure like a turn or they'll lure a down or they'll lure a recall and they expect too much from the dog. And when you expect too much from the dog, two things happen. Either one, the dog gets frustrated and gets into crazy drive. Um, thank you. Like that. Or the dog will get frustrated and shut down, right? Goofy, you have to go over here and lie down. Can you knock down the lights, Goofy. Hey, it's gonna knock down my. I only have one light here. Um, 
So yeah, so, so the dog gets frustrated. So luring and shaping behaviors has to be done kind of carefully. You need to make sure that the dog doesn't get out of control and that the dog doesn't shut down and stop. So you're kind of saying both she kind of checks out and then other times she gets super crazy um, in driving so I get playful. And those are the two things that just show me that you're not rewarding her fast enough. Uh, do it fast, reward fast. Big, a lot of little successes will make for one big success and that'll make this whole thing a lot easier. I'm gonna do one last um, one because uh, well, maybe we'll do a couple more, let's see. I have a rescue hound who's six. I've worked, this is for little Leno, right? Um, I just read that one. You just got that one, right? Boy, I need an assistant. Janet's not here to help me, so I, everything goes to hell in a half, hand basket. All right. Um, all right, this one goes out to Donald Trump. I swear to God, it's right here. It says Donald Trump. You see that? So, um, Donald Trump, Mr. President. I currently use a halty head collar to walk my 55 kilo dog on a short leash. I have two questions. Would a martingale be more effective than a head collar for corrections? Currently he pulls like 5% of the time he's on walks with me. Would the martingale be good to use when I attach a long line to my dog? No. And attach, no. Um, it's also not ideal. No. Um, and I was also wondering whether a Herm Springer prong collar would be better or worse than a martingale. So first of all, um, Donald, Mr. President, you need to make sure that the, the dog head harnesses are, are an absolute no. I don't advocate them. I don't use them. I recommend against them because I think they're a disaster. Martingale, I think it's a fantastic collar. It's a great collar to use. It'll give you a lot of great training with your dog. I think the dog will enjoy it. And if you watch my video on using the prong collar properly, I think the prong collar would be really good to enforce some good behaviors and to get the dog to really understand what you want. So there you go. Uh, put that down as that one. We did that one. Um, let's see. Let's see how much more time we got. Can I do one more for you? I think I can. I think I can squeeze one more in here. Um, oh, let's do two more. Big Bear Rescue Dog. I want to start long line training with my dog. Do you have any recommendations of a particular brand? Also, how long is too long? What's a good length? Great, excellent, awesome question. Long line training is generally done with a 15 foot line. I like 15 foot lines. Um, maybe 12 foot, 12 to 15 foot. There's no real brand. It's just a long line. Um, what I actually use is I get the tubular webbing over at REI or you know at any hiking store, a tubular webbing, and I just um, tie a, uh, a snap, a snap hook or a spring snap or what I don't know what they call it, um, but it's like the snap that you go like this that's on the end of a leash. I put that on there and I make my own long line, so it doesn't really even matter. But any brand is fine, 12 to 15 feet, or what I prefer because I think they work the best. And um, good job, you'll have a really great time with your long line training. I think it'll be really good. Last one I'm gonna do here is for Danielle. Will you make a video on how to maintain a healthy pack for owners with multiple dogs? Also how to train two dogs at once as I should spend 20 minutes a day with each of them focusing on their leash training and then do other activities to drain their energy. Well, you don't wanna drain their energy. You wanna train them when they're in high drive because that's gonna make for the best trained dog that you're gonna get. But um, I mean, a, a video on maintaining a healthy pack, you just need to be strong. Uh, Janet and I have five dogs um, and we're very strong with our dogs. We, we love our dogs. They get a lot of cuddle time, a lot of love time. They also get st structured training. They know what, what we demand of them, that we know what, they know what we'll expect and what we will and won't accept. Um, and that's really important. I don't suggest training two dogs at once, like having one dog laying there while the other one's training because it's super hard for you, especially if you're not a professional trainer, um, and it's super difficult on the dogs because they start to play and get distracted. So put one dog some, somewhere where they can't see the other dog, in the car, in a, you know, in a crate, oh, in a crate, of course, if it's in the car. Um, put the dog in the house, put the dog somewhere away from the other dog so that you can focus on good training with your one dog that you're working with, and then, um, and then you know, keep it 15, 20 minutes, and I think you'll be just, just fine. So that's about 15 minutes of, of training. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I want to thank you guys for training your dogs. Consider joining my membership section. There's tons of great videos on the inside, um, tons more than uh, different ones that are on the outside. Subscribe to my channel, please. Um, so watch more videos in these playlists. There's tons of videos. There's tons of great information. Train your dog, structure your dog, love your dog, give your dog all the love and structure you possibly can because it's going to make them happier. It's going to make your life a lot better. Training your dogs is the best thing you can do for them. And Please don't buy into the hype of positive only clicker training or anything like that. Use a balanced training approach with your dog. Give him the information he needs to stay alive and keep him out of the shelter. Thanks.